हेलो वेलकम टू साइंस क्लास ऑफ सिंपल लेक्चर डॉट कॉम वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड सिलेबस इन दट द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इज अल्टरनेट सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी इन द प्रीवियस स्टैंडर्ड्स you know the alternate sources of energy that is based on the coal we are getting the energy based on the petrol we are getting the energy here in detail we are learning in this session we will be discussing about the introduction part of alternate source of energy solar energy conversion of solar energy into heat energy and solar pond let us begin with the introduction part as we already know that in the previous standards we studied that we can get the energy in different forms that is by using coal by using petrol by using kerosene etc we can obtain the energy but once if you use this we can't able to use it again that means it is non renewable we are discussing in this session that based on the renewable sources how the energies are obtained in your previous classes you have learned that the sources of energy are depleting and that are that there is a need for their conservation it is just enough if we think of some measures of conserving energy sources such as fossil fuels or such measures going to be effective should we not think of alternative sources of energy yes the need of the day is to look for alternating so alternative sources of energy are there any such alternative sources of energy or we having any other method to get the energy yes we are having the other methods further we will be discussing the other methods in which we can obtain the energy the social economic and scientific development of a country are directly linked to its energy that means the development of the country will be based on the energy resources what we are getting and what we are using the conventional sources of energy that are being used for a long time are generally non renewable they include coal petroleum natural gases and electricity these are the non renewable sources that means we can't able to use it again if you are using coal once it is burnt then that's enough that means we can't able to use that coal again and again once it is burnt it's over likewise petrol also natural gas gases also therefore these are taken as the non renewable around or non renewable means once if we are using then again we can't able to use it that one we are thinking about the renewable sources we are not thinking about the non renewable sources here in this we are thinking about the renewable sources nowadays we are using this non renewable things like coal petroleum things in such a way that it can last within few years that means we may not get coal or petroleum things within a few years therefore we are thinking the other alternate method to get the energy we are using them so extensively that their reserves are depleting at a fast rate at the same time 
it is become becoming increasingly difficult to discover new deposits keeping this in mind there are attempts all over the world to tap alternative sources of energy all over the world they are planning for the alternate sources of energy since the coal petroleum products are depleting with a very fast so that we are thinking of using the alternate source of energy here we are having a graph in which in how much percentage we are using the coal natural gases etc nowadays we are using the coal at a rate of 46% utilizing 72% of the capacity we are using 23% of the natural gas we are using only 20% of nuclear energies 7% of hydro power that is based on the water resources and remaining percent will be of renewable like solar energy like that we are using which other sources of energy are being used now as you already shown in the figure at present there are several sources of renewable energy which are being tapped these are commonly described as non conventional sources of energy they include energy from sun wind tides geothermal sources biomass and even from the waste we are getting the energy that means other than the coal petrol we are using solar that is the radiations what we are getting from the sun wind tides these are the other methods in which we can get the energy these forms of energy are abundant renewable pollution free and economic eco friendly that means this the radiations what we are getting from the sun wind geothermal all these are abundant in nature and also renewable that means we can use it again pollution free they are not doing any pollution to the so environment eco friendly they can also be conventionally made available in urban and rural and even remote areas that means since the radiations wind it is we are getting available in all the places it may be the urban places it may be rural or it may be in case of the remote areas use of non conventional forms of energy can serve two purposes that is based on the non conventional we are having two purposes the first one is supply of energy in a decentralized system based on the decentralized system we can send the energy from one point to another point decentralized system means in which the energy can be stored sustaining a cleaner environment the environment becomes clean it will be not dirty it will be clean and it will be not polluted let us now look into this alternative sources of energy here we are discussing mainly two alternate sources of energy the first one is conversion of solar energy into heat energy and the second one will be the conversion of solar energy into electrical energy solar energy solar energy means the radiations what we are getting from the sun that is far away from the distance as we know that the earth and the sun they are at very far distance that is about 150 million kilometers 
from that much of distance we are getting the radiations as the distance increases the intensity or the frequency of that radiation will be decreased as we know that on the surface of the sun the radiations what we are having or the temperature what we are having on the surface of the sun is nearly 6000 kelvin but when it reaches the earth surface we are getting the temperature nearly 300 kelvin to 350 kelvin that means due to the large distance the temperature goes on decreases based on the radiations what we are getting with respect to that particular temperature using that radiations only we are converting into other forms of energy sun provides us enormous amount of energy in the form of solar radiation it reaches the earth from a distance of about 150 million kilometers in the form of small wave packets called as photons the radiations what we are getting from the sun to the surface of the earth it will be not in a form of continuous it will be in a form of wave packets which is called as photons or it is also called as the quanta this quanta or photons is named as the particle nature it is the result of continuous thermonuclear fusion taking place in the sun if you observe the sun the sun does not shows the symptoms of cooling here the radiations what we are getting continuously from the sun is due to the fusion reaction which is taken place inside the sun due to the fusion reaction only we are getting the radiations with a large scale and also without showing the symptoms of cooling in the sun the amount of solar energy reaching per square meter of earth atmosphere is called as solar constant solar constant means solar energy reaching per square meter in 1 square meter the solar energy what we are getting of earth atmosphere is called as solar constant it is equivalent to 1.36 kilowatt kilo means 1000 therefore the energy what we are getting in a solar constant will be of 1.36 kilowatt in 12 hours that means in a day we know that that is 24 hours all the 24 hours we are not getting the sun radiation in that average we are taking that means for 12 hours we are getting the sun radiation on the surface of the earth for that 12 hours only we are getting the energy that means the power of 1.36 kilowatt for 12 hours of time energy being received in the atmosphere is about 1.5 into 10 to the power of 18 kilowatt per hour per day in the atmosphere the energy used will be of 1.5 into 10 to the power of 18 kilowatt hour that is for one day next move to the applications of solar energy in that the first application is conversion of solar energy into heat energy as you know that nowadays we are using the solar panels why we are using the solar panels because the radiations what we are getting is made to incident on that solar panel then it will be converted into a form of useful energy like cooking purposes or in case of the getting a hot water etc solar energy falling on the surface of the earth can be converted into thermal energy 
the heat generated can be stored in a solar collectors these are the solar panels the radiations which is reaching the earth instead of reaching the earth we are making those radiation to reach or to incident on the solar panels this collection of solar panels is taken as the solar collectors it can be utilized for various purposes such as heating of water and cooking of food you are familiar with the solar water heaters erected on the rooftop of houses solar heaters are also being used in drying the fruit grains and vegetables seasoning of wood and dealumization of marine water that means using the solar panels we are cooking the food we are getting the hot water using that we can dry the fruits also we can dry the food grains also like that we are using for many purposes for many purposes we are using this solar radiations which is made to incident on the solar collectors based on that we are using for the useful energy the another method we are using is the solar pond as we know that if you take a beaker in which you are taken certain amount of water if solar radiation incident then the water particle gets heated up and then that temperature will be sent to the surroundings and energy will be wasted instead of wasting the energy in that manner we are collecting that energy by adding certain amount of salt here if you observe we are taking a pond in which at the bottom we are using the salt if we use the salt then the water particles which is get heated up will not move upwards it will be staying there only if that heated water particles stays in the same position means then the energy will be stored if assume that we are not using the salt particles then what happens the water particle get heated up moves upward then it will go to the environment and heat will be lost to avoid that we are putting the salt particles and hence we are not using the, we are not losing the heat in case of the solar pond this idea was done in india that is in gujarat solar pond is one of the most promising technology in harvesting solar energy it is a large scale solar collector with an integrated arrangement of storage of heat energy if you observe the diagram here we are having different layers in from here to here you are having certain amount of energy from here to here another form of energy that means the energy stored will be taken place in a form of layers because at the bottom the salt will be in more number therefore you will be having more amount of energy that can be stored at the bottom little bit amount of energy when we come to the top like that based on the different layers we are having different energy storages you know that water and air become lighter and rise above when heated when you heat the water water particle loses its density due to that reason it moves upward and the heavier water particle moves downward again it gets heated up moves upward like this 
the exchange of the water particles will be taking place from one point to another point if it comes to the surface then it will be mixing with the environment and heat will be lost when water is heated by solar radiation hot water from the bottom of the pond rises and reaches the surface it loses the heat gained to the atmosphere the result is that pond water remains at a temperature nearer to the to that of the atmosphere that means the pond water will be having the temperature with respect to the atmosphere temperature that means there will be no variation in the temperature with respect to a pond water and also with respect to a atmosphere in this case this loss of heat is prevented by dissolving salts in the bottom of the pond if you are dissolving the salts in the bottom of the pond then there will be a variation of temperature with respect to a pond and also with respect to a atmosphere because in this case we are not losing the temperature it makes water denser and hence it cannot rise to the surface the solar energy remains trapped in the pond solar energy remains in the pond only india was the first asian country to have established a solar pond in buju that is in gujarat it is designed to supply about 220 lakh kilowatt hour of thermal energy annually in one year based on this solar pond we are getting the energy which is of 220 lakh kilowatt hour is it clear about this solar pond and conversion of solar energy into heat energy these are very important for the examination so far in this session we have discussed about the introduction part of the alternate sources of energy solar energy conversion of solar energy into heat energy solar pond in the next session we will be moving to the conversion of solar energy into electrical energy geothermal energy wind energy if you are having any doubts in this session feel free to post it in the science forum we will be there with you to clarify your doubts thank you